the magpie's lesson. Magpies are found in America, Europe, and Australia. They are black and white in color. They are sociable birds who love brightly colored objects, which they often steal from people's gardens. Years and years ago, ever so many years ago, only one bird in the whole world knew how to build a nest. That wise bird was the magpie. One day, all the other birds went to the magpie. They wanted to learn how to build nests. They begged the magpie to teach them. Indeed, I'll be glad to teach you," said Mrs. Magpie. "Just watch and listen to me. First, you must choose a tall tree, like this great oak. Then, take sticks." A tree," broke in the bold eagle. "A tree here in this valley." No trees nor valleys for me. My nest shall be on the highest cliff of the mountain. And away flew the eagle without waiting to hear more of the magpie's lesson. To this day, he puts together a few rough sticks on a rocky mountain cliff and calls them a nest. The magpie began again. Take sticks like these, she said, to a high branch. Are you a fool? cried the lark don't you know that the first strong wind will blow your nest to the ground and the first boy who comes this way will throw stones at it added mrs bobolink no, no high branches, branches for us sang the lark and the bobolink together and down they flew into the tall grass of the meadow there they have made their nests ever since Mrs. Magpie didn't even look at the birds flying away. Weave the sticks together so, in and out, she said cheerfully. That will make the bottom of the nest. I'll not set my nest on a branch like that, spoke up the oriole. The wind surely would blow it off, as the lark just said. And the oriole flew away, and hung her nest from little twigs. There you may see it even today, swinging in the wind, far out at the end of a long branch. Cover the inside of your nest with mud, Mrs. Magpie went on. Then line it with soft grass. So. Dear, dear, so much work to make a nest," yawned the whippoorwill. "I'm not going to take the trouble." And that lazy bird hasn't made a nest from that day to this. She just lays her eggs in a hollow in the ground, or perhaps on a log. Who, who, who would go to all that trouble? Hooted the owl. I think I have a better plan. She looked very wise, but said no more. You can guess what her plan was when you find her eggs in a crow's or a hawk's old nest. Now take more mud and sticks," began the magpie once more. You should build a dome over your nest, that is, to hide the little ones and to keep out the rain. Oh, never mind the dome," said the robin. "I will cover my little ones with my wings. I can hide them and keep off the rain." You are right, Mrs. Robin," said the crow. "We have no use for domes." And to this day, neither robins nor crows have built domes over their nests. Mrs. Magpie went on building her nest, just as she knew it ought to be built. Soon it was done, dome and all. Indeed, Mrs. Magpie," said the swallows. "We like your nest. The dome is a fine thing, but why should we build it? There are plenty of domes already built. 
we only need to make our nest under them. Ever since then, many swallows build their nests on buildings, often under a roof or a window ledge. Others have made theirs under roofs of open barns and still others under eaves. So all the birds flew away and left Mrs. Magpie without saying thank you. Each one built her nest as she pleased, and each one thought her way so much better than the magpie's. The magpie still builds her nest at the top of a high tree. She makes it of mud and sticks and covers it with a dome to make it comfortable and cozy.